All right, let's do this. Camera one, camera two. Camera three. So the Sony ZV E10, I feel, is one of those underrated cameras that people often overlook because it's an APS-C camera. But the truth is, whether you're a beginner or not, the ZV E10 is a fantastic camera to have in your camera bag. So I'm gonna give you 10 reasons why you should get the Sony ZV E10 in 2023. <laughs> Reason number one, great image quality when it comes to photography. The ZV-E10 is a 20 megapixel sensor APS-C camera and 20 megapixels is plenty fine to print high quality prints. In fact, here's some photos that I shot with the Sony ZV-E10. They look great, vibrant, and if you zoom in all the way, it's pretty dang sharp. Of course, that kind of depends on what lens you use with the camera. I personally like using uh, the Sony 15 millimeter G lens F1.4. I think with the size and weight of the lens and the camera body just makes for such a great combo. Like just look look at it, it just looks so cool. It feels really nice, very lightweight. So in terms of photography, the image quality is fantastic with the ZV-E10 as long as you use the right lens. If you're gonna use like a, a cheaper lens, then you're probably gonna get some softer images. And so lens choice plays a big role when it comes to creating great photography and that goes for any camera. I mean, if you're gonna use a full frame camera and use a crappy lens, then you're most likely gonna have a crappy looking image. But paired with the right lens, then you can come up with some pretty awesome photos with the ZV-E10. Reason number two, 4K video. 4K video shot with the ZV-E10 looks great. And again, just like with photography, it all depends on what type of lens you use with the ZV-E10. If you use a lens that, that can only go down to f4 for an aperture versus using a lens that has an aperture at f1.4, you're not really gonna get that uh, cinematic blurry background or bokeh uh, as you would with a faster lens. And when using an APS-C sensor camera like the ZV-E10, you do have to consider that crop factor, not just for focal length, but for aperture as well. Okay, let's do, uh, let's do some math real quick. So let's say, uh, okay, so F4, all right, so with uh, F4, you multiply that with the crop factor, which is 1.6, uh, you're gonna get an aperture of 6.4 with a crop sensor camera like the ZV-E10. But if you use a lens like the, the 15 millimeter F1.4, we're gonna go F1.4 or 1.4, times 1.6. The aperture will be 2.24 on the ZV-E10. And because of that, in this combo specifically, I'm able to film some really cool shots like this, and this, and even this. So if you're wondering if 4K video even looks good on a crop sensor camera like the ZV-E10, of course it's gonna look good. You just gotta know how to use a camera, you gotta use the right lens. Of course, lighting plays a big role, composition plays a big role, camera movement plays a huge role. But in terms of overall image quality for 4K video, the ZV-E10 kicks butt, just like this camera shot. So cool. Reason number three, interchangeable lenses. With the ZV-E10, you can use pretty much any E-mount lens out there. And what's really cool is that a lot of people, especially sports photographers, uh, they often use APS-C cameras with their full frame lenses to get a further reach because of that 1.6 crop factor. And whether you do sports or you wanna capture your kids soccer matches or you're on safari or whatever like instead of having to bring like multiple long lenses like a 70 to 200 or a 600 like what if you just brought a 70 to 200 lens and then use that on an APS-C camera like the ZV-E10 multiply the crop factor and you get a oh, what is it 112 to 320 millimeter focal length that's that's just so cool so if you kind of want to be more versatile when you're on the field whether it's a sports event or a wedding or whatever, like it may not be a bad idea to have an APS-C camera in your camera bag, along with your full frame camera and your multiple lenses. And that's one of the reasons why I love the Sony ecosystems because like I can use full frame lenses with APS-C camera bodies or even full frame cameras with APS-C lenses. That might seem a little counterproductive, but you you can. But the fact that this camera is interchangeable with E-mount lenses is a great reason to get the ZV-E10. And with that said, reason number four, lens options. There's like 70 plus Sony E-mount lenses out there, plus other third-party lenses like Sigma and Tamron. And so there's just a huge plethora of Sony E-mount lenses to choose from and combine it with the ZV-E10. Now, like I said before, I have the uh, the Sony 15 millimeter G lens, the uh, F1.4. It's great. It's a little on the pricey side, not gonna lie, but a great alternative alternative to these lenses is the Sigma Contemporary lenses, specifically the Sigma 16 millimeter. I love that lens. Such a great lens, incredibly sharp and really affordable. And so if you're worried about lens options for an APS-C camera like the ZV-E10, 
not to worry. There are plenty of lenses out there that are absolutely fantastic. Reason number five, and probably one of the best reasons why you should get this camera in 2023, is the fact that you can live stream with this camera with a single USB-C cable. You don't have to use an HDMI cable or a, a capture card if you don't want to. You just got to plug in a USB-C cable straight to your computer and you can live stream. And the best part about that is that it also charges your camera at the same time. So you can stream for eight hours if you want to. I, I can't imagine doing that. But if you want to stream for that long, then you totally can. And what's great about the ZV-E10 specifically is that you don't need required software to live stream. Like you can just plug and play and open up Twitch or open up Zoom and you can choose the ZV-E10 as your main camera. It's that easy. So if anything else, like if you don't want to use this camera out on the field, you just want to have a studio camera or maybe even like a, a live stream camera, the ZV-E10 is probably going to be the best camera that you can get. I mean, there's obviously cameras that are dedicated for streaming, but the fact that you can use this camera on the field as well as in the studio or in your room as a live stream camera is pretty cool. Reason number six, the ZV-E10 actually has a decent mic. I don't usually say this because I never really recommend using the onboard mic of any camera. Like if you can use an external mic, it's just gonna sound better. But in a pinch, using the audio from the ZV-E10 is actually kind of decent and totally usable. Now the audio that you're hearing is from the ZV-E10. We got trucks and cars driving by and I'm talking and hopefully the audio sounds clear. But as far as I know, the audio coming from the onboard mic is totally usable. It's absolutely not the best. And if you do want clear audio, then you know, you should get an external mic. But if you're in a pinch or if you just want to use a camera as is, like if you're a travel content creator, the audio is totally usable. Now mind you, if you are going to use the onboard mic of the camera, I highly recommend using the windscreen that comes with the camera. It looks kind of funny. It looks like a little mini rabbit that's attached to your camera, but it helps reduce on that wind sound if you want clear audio. Reason number seven, fast autofocus. I mean, that kind of applies to most Sony cameras. And so with the ZV-E10, it's just the same. Autofocus is super fast, very accurate. And Sony definitely has the best autofocusing system of any camera out there. So when it comes to making vlogs or shooting your kids soccer matches or whatever, autofocus is gonna be on point with the ZV-E10. Reason number eight, the ZV-E10 is a great camera for gimbal work. And mainly because of the squared off design, like you don't have that viewfinder like you would with most full frame cameras. And because that top part is cut off, like you can do really cool angles with pretty much any gimbal. This camera works really well with gimbals like the, the Zhiyun Crane M2 or the DJI RS3 Mini, and then pair it with a light lens like the Sony 11 millimeter or 15 millimeter or even Sigma 16 millimeter contemporary lens. You're gonna be able to easily create some beautiful gimbal shots and also won't drain you so much because that entire setup won't be as heavy. And so if you do a lot of gimbal work and you're looking for a camera specifically for gimbal work, then yeah, ZV-E10 is great. Small, compact, great autofocus, like I said before, making this an ideal camera for gimbal work. And with that said, reason number nine why you should get the ZV-E10 in 2023 is the size. Like this camera is so compact, so lightweight, this can fit into any camera bag. Great for travel, great to just have in your camera bag. Like in my camera bag that I take with me, I have three full frame camera bodies and full frame lenses and it's, it's tiring, man, my back. Oh gosh. And so if you don't want to do that, you just want to travel and carry a light camera that's very capable, shoots great 4K video, takes great photos. The ZV-E10 is really hard to beat. Like, look look how small this is. This is nice. I'm gonna pair it with my hand and I have small hands. Look at that. And lastly, reason number 10 why you should get the ZV-E10 is the price. Like 698 is really hard to beat for a high quality mirrorless camera with interchangeable lens compatibility. And if you wanna get the kit lens, which is $100 more, like for $800, you can have an entire vlogging kit. That's pretty cool. I mean, camera gear is expensive. And so if you are on a budget, obviously start small and then build your way up. And what's great is that if you're starting your photography or filmmaking journey and you get a camera like the ZV-E10, this is a camera that you can actually grow with. Like when you start doing gigs, like whether it's a wedding project or corporate video or whatever, your goal 
goal should be to invest in lenses versus camera bodies. Like you wanna get yourself a standard zoom lens like a 24 to 70, you wanna get a wide lens like a 16 to 35, or even a telephoto zoom lens. And basically with that goal, you're giving yourself the, the versatility of capturing different focal lengths for different projects. And so if you start with the ZV-E10 and the kit lens, then maybe you can upgrade to a better standard zoom lens. And then after that, invest in a wide lens or then a telephoto zoom lens or a mic or a light or whatever. But because the ZV-E10 is a very capable APS-C camera, you can keep the camera body in your camera bag for as long as you want and just upgrade to better lenses, get lights, get a mic, get all the camera gear that you want while also keeping the ZV-E10 in your camera bag. And for me, now having three full frame camera bodies, like I like the fact that I have an APS-C camera to use for my live streams or to use to extend the reach of my lenses because of that 1.6 APS-C crop factor or the fact that this can be a great top down camera shot for this whole setup over here. And so for just under $700, the ZV-E10 is probably one of the best bang for your buck cameras out there. And at the end of the day, I mean, let's get real, it's all about your budget. Like if you can't afford a full frame camera or a cinema camera, you probably shouldn't get a full frame or cinema camera. But if you have the money to get an APS-C camera with a decent lens, like a Sigma 16 millimeter, then yeah, it makes it more realistic to get a decent camera setup for photography and 4K video. Now, with all that said, there are a few things about the Sony ZV-E10 that I don't really like. Uh, things like no touchscreen interface. Like it's 2023, touchscreen interface should be a standard across all cameras. Albeit this camera is a couple years old now, and navigating through the menu with the directional pad isn't that big of a deal, but touchscreen interface, come on. You can still tap to focus and tap to track, so that's pretty cool, but yeah, I kinda wish the ZV-E10 had a had touchscreen interface. Also, this camera uses uh, that smaller, older uh, Sony battery, and so battery life isn't necessarily the best, and, uh, and if you are planning on getting the Sony ZV-E10, I'd recommend just getting at least three batteries. And then the last thing I'm not a big fan of with the ZV-E10 is the grip size. I mean, it's it's fine for, for people in smaller hands, but I just wish that the, the grip was maybe half an inch longer just to make it a little more grippy, you know? Grippy, is that a word? Just made up a word. But other than that, the ZV-E10 is a fantastic camera for 4K video, for photography, and I really feel it is a perfect camera for beginners. And so if you're just starting out, you're looking for your first mirrorless camera to shoot 4K video, do some photography, definitely check out the Sony ZV-E10. And if you have any questions about the camera, let me know in the comments below, would love to help you out. And if you wanna check out my video comparing this camera with the Sony ZV-1, then definitely click the link up over here or somewhere over here, and I'll see you there.